important that we get our hormone balance right. So the 34, I mean, I don't think they're all here, to be fair. I think this is the 34 <laughs> top symptoms of menopause. Yeah. So these are common symptoms to expect during menopause. And some of them are really weird. Now, these are ones that people really think about as menopause. But the ones that people don't realise are that I think are the ones in early perimenopause, um, which is usually women, maybe 37, 38, who suddenly go, oh, I just don't feel as confident as I once did. Oh, I'm just a little bit more nervous about driving than I was like really little low things or my sleep's just not quite right. And or there are the things or I'm just a bit more anxious. I just notice I'm running lists around my head a little bit more. They're the bits that are missed over and over and over again by doctors. And that is when we need to be going, OK, what do we need to clear out in your life in terms of your stress? What do we need to clear out in terms of food intolerances? And how do we support you with the right diet, with supplements? And in some cases, some bioidentical hormones, which we're going to come on to. Super exciting. So let's just talk hot flushes for a moment. OK, two types of hot flushes. So low progesterone gives you the quick flushes. So some women talk about them coming from the back of their knees. Some people say from their ankles, but they whoosh up the body. They're really aggressive. They're fast. They're quite shocking. And what they actually are is as the progesterone drops off, you get a spike in cortisol. So it's this, <gasps> it's literally like a jolt of adrenaline and they come on really, really quickly. And then they are gone within one to two minutes. And you don't even, it's like they, they, you don't know that you've had it. It's gone until the next one. And it's quick and it's sharp and then it's gone. They're the ones that women are having predominantly in peri to postmenopause. And they can leave you dripping wet. They can. But low estrogen hot flushes, I, I, until I'd experienced both, I couldn't really get a concept of it. They are fascinating because you could literally heat your whole house from them. So low estrogen hot flushes are slow. They are going to go on for about 10 minutes. They radiate from the inside out. And again, women will find they'll go, they start in my back or they start in my chest or in my tummy. And they radiate and they radiate and they radiate and you will be able to stand up from the sofa and put your hand on it and it will be hot. So the difference is they don't tend to leave you so sweaty, but you'll just be hot and doing the flappy bit, but you won't be, um, uh, yes, quite so sweaty. So it, it, this is a little bit generic because low estrogen can sometimes look like low progesterone and low progesterone can look like low estrogen but in general low progesterone is a weight gain it's dropping confidence in everyday activities like driving it's forgetfulness an increase in urinating it's so interesting as well just going back to the 14 year old girls who have the heavy periods so many of them uh resonate with anxiety so heavy periods and all bad periods even irregular periods and anxiety so it's interesting, isn't it, this connection? Uh, this feeling of spinning too many plates, uh, insomnia, being snappy, low libido and fatigue. Now, low estrogen, we've seen on that chart, low estrogen occurs much later in the menopause journey. It can cause insomnia and weight gain and headaches, but it will, you'll get those differences in the hot flushes. And low estrogen will also usually start to cause things like vaginal dryness and, and dryness in general. So people get dry eye, dry mouth, total lack of interest in sex. And this, yeah, this gray mood, it's like a lack of enthusiasm or motivation. So uh, estrogen, low estrogen is like an apathy, low testosterone, you haven't put that on here, but low testosterone is a, literally it's like you know you think about really particularly men with all the testosterone and they're really motivated and they're you know a type personalities that's the testosterone thing it's like ambition and drive and determination and low testosterone is don't care if the business that i've been running for 15 years fails be fine like it's you have nothing um whereas low estrogen is just it's just all a bit gray and i'm not really feeling very motivated 